guys, how's it going, Laura with Garden Answer? Today's project is gonna be pretty simple. So I have three sets of two pots that either flank a walkway like this one or a doorway. And all six of these pots already have an evergreen centerpiece in place that already planted. You guys might remember uh, when I planted these cone boxwoods, it was kind of a windy day when I did that. Um, but today, all I'm gonna be doing is filling in with some really pretty annuals around each one of the evergreens. So these are the two that I wanted to start with. This is right in front of our house is our front entryway. So I've already got these green mountain cone boxwoods in here. And the reason I chose this for varieties because they already grow in a conical shape. So they already have more of a formal flair to them and that's kind of what I wanted up here. And then around the outsides, I'm gonna be filling in with this gorgeous Supertunia Mulberry Charm. This is a new one this year. It almost looks like a mini Bordeaux, but a little bit more on the pink side. Super great plant. They can tolerate a lot of heat. They can uh, tolerate a little drought once they're established. And this spot right here gets a lot of sun. And I decided since I have actually the hay racks right in front of me, which you may have seen us plant up, I've got a lot of color in those hay racks. I decided to go with just one plant in these pots. And I'm gonna to try to do that a little bit more around our property this year. Instead of jamming them full of so many different colors, I kind of wanted to just highlight single plants. So what I'm gonna do is add in a little bit of slow release fertilizer first, and then I'm gonna plant these up. I think this looks so good. I'm really enjoying just putting one type of flowering annual in pots. I just think it's so peaceful to look at. And I think these are the sweetest little flowers. I don't think I mentioned that these are the Festinata urns from Crescent. I can't remember what size the pot is, but I'll make sure to have it on the screen. And the other great thing about Supertunias to remember is that they're self-cleaning. They do not have to be deadheaded, which is so huge, especially if you've got a lot of containers. You don't wanna be spending a ton of time out there deadheading old blooms off. So these ones will just keep on going and they'll act as both your filler and your spiller because they do mound up a little bit. So they'll kind of fill in and then they'll spill over the sides. All right, let's move on to our next set of pots. This is the second location right here. These two containers also flank a walkway and opening to our garden. In fact, this is where the bench is with the lemon coral sedum and the urns that I just planted up not long ago. I really like this spot. So what I've got going in these pots right now is an Alberta spruce, which this was in this pot all winter long and they've done really great. Uh, there are some lavender pansies around the base of the Alberta spruce and they still look pretty good. So what I'm gonna do, instead of just tossing them, I'm gonna try to take them out with their roots still intact. You can either do one of two things. You can plant them out in a real shady location in your garden, or you can do what I like to do. I like to send a picture to my family members and see if any um, of them want to plant them out in their landscape, which is what I'm gonna do with these. Um, when they're all cleaned out, I'm gonna come in with actually two varieties of plants. I know I said I'm gonna try to do one variety, but I think I can get away with it because they're the same color. So I have Super Bell's White, which is a beautiful, beautiful plant. I love the simplicity of white in the garden. It really glows at night. Um, it just looks really classic and timeless to me. I'm gonna pair it with Diamond Frost Euphorbia. This mix is going to be so pretty. The Diamond Frost Euphorbia is kind of that ethereal, just really wispy, kind of magical looking plant, I think. And I think when it intermixes with the um, Super Bell's White, it's just going to be a really pretty blend. So I'm going to clean these pots out and get them planted up. absolutely love how these turned out. I think the mixture of the spruce with the basket weave concrete pot and then the white blooms just has this elegant look to me. Can't wait to see how they grow in. I used four Diamond Frost Euphorbia and four Super Bells White in this pot. This, these are quite large, quite large openings, so I really wanted it to look full and abundant. In the pots up front that I just planted, I forgot to mention that I used five Super Tunias in each container. So this is the very last set of containers I'm gonna be planting today. Of course, we're right in front of the greenhouse. These are the galvanized containers Gardener Supply sent out last spring, and I put a Spartan Juniper topiary in each one of them. They've done really well. I've got pansies planted at the base, so I'll be pulling those and adding them to this bunch and then trying to move them out to a shadier location uh, so that they will survive. It's supposed to get really hot next week and they just don't do well in the heat. They start to fizzle out and just look bad. So we get them out while they're still looking good and they're still healthy and then hopefully they have a fighting chance. I'll be planting Super Bell's Grape Punch in these containers, just 100% Grape Punch. I love this plant because of the intensity of purple. I'm a huge fan of purple anyway. Uh, and then the size of these blooms is just 
like kind of incredible for a super bells. It's almost like a super tunia sized bloom. The other nice thing about planting just one variety of plant in a pot is that you don't have to worry about compatibility in terms of water requirements. I didn't mention that when I planted the diamond frost euphorbia and the super bells together that those are actually very compatible in terms of watering. Um, so that's always really nice. So I'm gonna clean these out and get these planted up. So that's it you guys, I love how these turned out as well. I love the mass of purple. And everything I planted today was just so simple. I mean, I only planted four different varieties of flowers and that's kind of the beauty of having an evergreen as your centerpiece. All you have to do is come in and change the flowers that are around the base every season. I'm, I like to have a mix. I like to have some pots with evergreen, some without, so that I just have a different look going on around my garden. I'm really excited to give you guys update shots of how these containers are doing throughout the season. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.